57 million al albums sold worldwide, spanning nine career records. Please welcome back a New York Times bestselling author, four-time Grammy nominee, and author of her second children's book, Sweet Dreams, Jewel. Was anybody here last year by chance? All new people, glad. Everybody hated the book so much the first time they hated the book the second time now. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. This is my second children's book called Sweet Dreams for You. It's really been fun for me to write these books. Uh, really, it's just for my son. I just did them as a keepsake. Um, as a lot of you know as parents, when you have a child, it just inspires you. Uh, with all kinds of new feelings you never knew you were capable of feeling before, and it really made me want to write. Um, trying to get pregnant to being pregnant were really, really prolific times for me, and now having was a two-year-old, not as much time to write, but I still <laughs> think it is. Um, and I wrote this actually several years before I even got pregnant with my son. Um, it was just about imagining what it would be like to have a child, and uh, the idea that I knew instantly that my dream for him would, my dream is, was for him to have sweet dreams. Um, and so that's what I base this on. It's about um, when your child falls asleep, wondering where they're going and wishing you could follow them into their dreams, wondering what blue skies they're seeing. Uh, Amy June Bates' illustrations are just beautiful. She really um, finds such beautiful imagery for following a child into slumber. Uh, so that's really it. I'm really, really pleased to be here. This is, again, my second children's book, and uh, I have two children's records out. It's been a really an honoring experience to be able to be taken into people's homes uh, and shared with their families has been really wonderful. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. My real name's Jewel. It's a real tea. It's a real tea. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I don't know. Yeah. You ever gonna do Broadway? Well, I would do Broadway. Gosh, it's a lot of work. I'm a little bit lazy. <laughs> Those six shows a week thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks to good books. <laughs> Yeah. I have one. Don't we, how are you? <laughs> I know it's like I'm here again. <laughs> um, but what are your thoughts on doing like a children's TV show? Would you consider doing something like that? I actually had a conceived a children's TV show called Ranchy Pants. Um, as I looked into the market, it's actually a difficult business to get into without giving away all of your rights and all of your creative. So I didn't end up really doing it because it looked like a lot of work. Again, kind of lazy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, how did the music come about for your books? Is it do you come up with the concept for the book first, and then the music kind of comes along after that, or? Yeah. Uh, can you talk when I'm writing, the melody and the lyrics usually come together. Um, the song for this was actually from an album called Lullaby uh, that I released independently. Um, I was able to be really successful. No radio, no. It was my first indie project, and it sold half a million copies, which is pretty amazing for an indie record or a non-indie record. So I was really pleased and very encouraged that um, there were fans out there that were interested in the type of music I was making. Awesome. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. How did you, in, how did you like doing uh, Platinum Hit? How did I like doing Platinum Hit? This was a show on Bravo for like two minutes um, about the process of songwriting. It was sort of a project runway for songwriters. Um, and apparently watching us write songs is so boring. It only was one season. <laughs> but I really did enjoy it. Um, it was wonderful. Anytime I get to mentor or be around talent, I really enjoy it. It's a difficult job, what we do. There's a lot to it that people don't understand behind the scenes, beyond music, of what it takes to be successful and what it takes to write a hit song. And so it was it was a lot of fun. I'm now a judge on the sing-off, and that was really a great experience. And that comes out in December. Yeah. <laughs> so how's life in Texas? Life in Texas is hot, I hear. We've been in Colorado all summer escaping the heat, so okay. that's been my plan. Yeah. <laughs> how about life as a cowboy's wife? Life as a cowboy's wife is good. It's a good life. I, I, really, it yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah, I was raised on a ranch and I think it's a nice thing. Well, my husband uh, is former military, but he always wanted to be a cowboy. So. I think it's probably very similar, <laughs> is my guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would say they're probably Same similar characters. soldiers in a way. Yeah, yeah. very honorable. Yeah. Really emotional, been touchy through, feeling. Been through you Texas, know. but I'm not sure I'd like to live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was it like for you um, when your first album came out? And, and I mean, I know you've been a performer for so many years, but then such a big exposure. Yeah. 
young. I was young. My first record, I was signed when I was 18. I was homeless yeah. at the time. Um, I remember thinking, I can never get famous. I'll never be able to handle it. I know, I'll make a folk record. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never get popular. Um, I kind of wanted to be like John Prine. I hoped, you know, I, I loved kind of cult artists that have made a living, but were never that famous. I didn't think I had the personality to really handle fame. Um, it did happen slowly, and I think I started to really dig my teeth in. The more people said I couldn't ever get on the radio, the more I was like, uh-huh, I can too. Um, I didn't think it'd go as big as it did. It was pretty extraordinary to go from homeless to selling 15 million albums. Um, it doesn't happen every day. It was. Uh, Surreal, especially for someone like me. I'm a writer at heart. I'm pretty uh, sensitive. Um, I uh, like watching people more than I like being watched. So it took me a while to figure out how to be authentic in that role. It, it felt like being put on a pedestal, which is, means you're destined to fall off of it. And I was really able through the internet to have a really direct dialogue with my fans and really just realize I could be as honest as I wanted. And as I changed, I could say, hey, I'm changing. Um, I never had to feel fake. My, my fans have always let me be honest about what I was and as I grew and changed. And that made me feel like it was doable. I felt like I could live with that if I could have an honest dialogue and be allowed to grow and change. Because getting famous at 19, you're going to change so much over the course of your life. So I really owe that to my, my fans, really. But it was a big adjustment. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, think I didn't always handle it the most gracefully. <laughs> I think fans know that about you. They sense that about you. Uh, and I think they really appreciate that. Well, about thanks. You. I hope so. Yeah. I haven't fooled all these years. It's going good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that you didn't get into trouble with the pretty Spears and all that. It seemed like a clean lifestyle. And at least a yeah. more of a um, role model for kids. Yeah, heroin never really affected me negatively, so no. <laughs> <laughs> I met you once before. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I met you once before outside the Letterman show. Uh huh. How was that experience? Uh, Letterman was great, yeah. I got a picture of you and you like, I'm like, you cherish that, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have a third row back. I'm hoping Flowers gets me a picture. Right on, maybe. You buy two books, no. <laughs> I'm a salesman. Any other questions? One more question. Yeah. Um, is writing... I love that you have this written down. What is that? <laughs> oh, my friend couldn't come, so oh, I have to read any sweet. questions. So. <laughs> um, it, was writing the book anything like the experience of writing your song? Um, well, in this case, it was exactly like it because it started out as a song. <laughs> and then uh, I just sort of stripped, yeah, these were both songs. They are the CDs included in the book. Um, I picked these songs because I felt they worked good as poems. Like when I wrote them out, just in my journal, I thought they worked really good on their own. And actually, I feel like you can hear the lyric better without the melody and the music distracting. So. Yeah, these were simple projects in a way for me to do. You, Amy had the really hard work. All right. I will see you guys at the books. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Once again, we're going to proceed with the signing now. So if you have a letter A, you can line up at the bottom of the kids' stairs. Thank you. Let's go.